A hearty good morning to all. From my English video course book, I'll explain a lesson for you today. So turn page number eighty-two. In a page number eighty-two, we have lesson six: the machine stops. The machine stops is a science fiction short story by E. M. Forster. The story set in a world where humanity lives underground and relies on a giant machine to provide its needs. Predicted technologies similar to instant messaging and the internet. Let us have some talkings about the space. Space is vast enough and full of secrets waiting to be discovered. Of all the incredible objects scientists have found out among the stars, some of the most spectacular are nebulas. Although most of the nebulas are invisible to the naked eye, modern telescopes are able to give us close-up views of some of the most beautiful objects in the galaxy. Like the clouds in the sky, nebula come in interesting shapes like flowers, insects, animals or people. This is how many of them get their names. Among these is the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is the most active area of the star formation in our galaxy. If we see with a naked eye, we could view a vague glow. With the help of the modern telescope, the extent of its wonder becomes visible. The Orion is 15 light years across. When you look at this nebula, you are looking at the stars being born. The Orion nebula is only a little glow, Orion's sword. According to modern astronomers, the Orion nebula is an enormous cloud of gas and dust. The Orion Nebula is so named because it lies within Orion the Hunter, a constellation that dominates the winter sky. After talking about the space, let us land on Earth. Imagine, if the Earth is relating to the time following a nuclear war or other catastrophic event and an action picture of the Mad Max type tough loner fights for survival against hordes of barbaric scavengers, then what would happen to humanity? So, let us know the outlines of the machine stops. The machine stops describes a world in which almost all humans have lost the ability to live on the surface of the earth. Each individual lives in isolation in a cell with all bodily and spiritual needs met by the omnipotent global machine. Thus, humans welcome this development as they are skeptical and fearful of first-hand experience. People forget that humans created the machine and treat it as a mystical entity whose needs supersede their own. Those who do not accept the deity of the machine are viewed as unmechanical and are threatened with homelessness. Eventually, the machine apocalyptically collapses and the civilization of the machine comes to an end. Now, let us step into the lesson. Welcome back to the lesson, The Machine Stops. First of all, let us have some talkings about the characters. There are only two characters in this lesson. First is Vashti, second is Kuno. Vashti is Kuno's mom and Kuno is son of Vashti. They do not live together. One lives in the underground machine while the other in an airship. In this lesson, there's a small room, hexagonal in shape, 
like a cell of a bee. There's no window nor lamp. Still it is filled with soft radiant. There are no openings for ventilation. Still the air is fresh. There are no musical instruments. Still you can hear the melodious sounds. An armchair is in the center of the cell on which a white faced lady can be seen. Means the cell belongs to her. She is Vesti. Suddenly an electric bell rings. Vesti touches a switch and the music is silent. She thinks, I suppose I must see who's there. So she calls out, Who is it? She was in an irritable manner. She was interrupted. She knew several thousand people in certain direction. Why? Because human communication had advanced worldwide, isn't it? Vashti listened into the receiver and her white face wrinkled into smiles. Why so like this? Because it was the call of Kuno, her son. Where was he? He was in an airship. Okay? So, Vashti and Kuno started chatting. Alright? Vashti said that she had got only 5 minutes to isolate herself and use that 5 minutes in chatting with Kuno. Later, she had to deliver her lecture on music during the Australian period. Vashti touched the lighting switches and the little room was plunged into darkness. Be quick, Kuno. I'm wasting my time in the darkness. Kuno, how slow are you? I really believe you enjoy dawdling. Vashti said hurriedly. I have called you before, mom, but you are always busy or isolated. I have something special to tell you. What's it, my dearest son? Be quick. Why could you not send it by pneumatic post? Oh no, because I prefer saying such a thing. I want you to come and see me. Vashti watched her son's face in the blue plate. So she said, but I can see you. What do you want? Oh mom, I want to see you not through the machine. I want to speak to you not through the wearisome machine. Oh hush, you mustn't say anything against the machine, said mom. Why not? You talk as if God had made the machine. I believe that you pray to it when you are unhappy. Men made it. Do not forget that. Great men, but men. The machine is much, but it is not everything. I see something like you in this plate, but I do not see you. I hear something like you through this telephone, but I do not hear you. That's why I want you to come. Pay me a visit, mom so that we can meet face to face and talk about the hopes that are in my mind. Vashti disliked airships. She disliked seeing the horrible brown earth and the sea and the stars when it is dark. That's why she was in the way of denying. Kuno continued, Do you not know four big stars that form an oblong and three stars close together in the middle of the oblong and hanging from these stars, three other stars? Vasti had no idea about this. She disliked the stars. But some interesting matter might be there. So she told Kuno to tell her. Okay? Now Kuno started saying, I had an idea that they were like a man. The four big stars are the man's shoulders and his knees. The three stars in the middle are like the belts that men wore once and the three stars hanging are like a sword. 
men carried swords about with them to kill animals and other men the words of kuno struck vesti's mind they seemed certainly original for her so she carried on listening his words all right now kuno continued the truth is that i wanted to see these stars again they are curious stars i want to see them not from the airship but from the surface of the earth as our ancestors did thousands of years ago mom you must come what is the harm of visiting the surface of the earth there is no harm but there is no advantage to said vishti slowly slowly kuno's image in the blue plate faded vishti started searching him she called him many times without kuno she felt lonely once again the little room was flooded with radiance that four stars and three in the middle were like a man doubted her later she switched off her correspondence for it was the time to deliver her lecture on australian music her music lasted 10 minutes successfully then she fed talked to her many friends had a bath talked again and went for resting she kept on thinking was kuno's invitation an event should she take an airship and visit him like this our lesson is over till then keep on learning take care thank you